Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be taking a look at my new Hack Pro. Uh, I've been uh, contemplating building a Hackintosh for quite some time. One thing I severely lacked was uh, single core performance uh, in, in a lot of the applications and I uh, wasn't using as much multi-core as what I thought. Uh, so basically my old setup was uh, eight core Mac Pro with D500s. Uh, and before that, I, the beast that I used for a, a good five years, maybe six actually in total, uh, was uh, the Mac Pro before that, the classic Mac Pro or the cheese grater. Uh, and I feel this is going to tie me over until Apple do something and if not, I guess I'm just going to move to Windows. Uh, the bonus of having a Hackintosh is I get uh, to dual boot into Windows. Uh, one thing about Macs, they've always been aesthetically pleasing uh, on your desk uh, and I wasn't a huge fan of a lot of ATX cases. and. That was until Fantex released the Tempered Glass Evolve, and I, you know, it's such a it's such a gorgeous case, um, and it looks beautiful all, all set up. So uh, once it did come available, I did order it, and we'll run through the Clover and the Multi Beast and my BIOS settings. But uh, this wasn't possible without a golden guide uh, on Tony X. 86 by Stork. Um, he's it's a, it's an amazing guide. I just followed it uh, to the T, and uh, literally I've had no issues. Uh, sleep, uh, App Store, iMessage, everything's working just fine. Okay, so now let's go over some of the specs that I used for this build. So we're using the Maximus uh, Hero Z170 uh, i7 6700 quad core. Rocking 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3000 megahertz memory. Uh, and for a CPU cooler, we're using the Corsair H110i. SSD drive, we're using an XP941 512 gigabyte. So this matches the performance in the Trashcan Mac Pro. It's basically the same chipset uh, used for both. I went with the EVGA 850 watt G2. I guess um, I'd rather have a bit more power uh, for the possibility of maybe adding in two cards later on. Uh, I could probably have gotten away with a 650 watt, but um, you know, better safe than sorry, and go with that 850. So for the PCI cards, I'm using a Apple compatible chipset a USB 3 4 port card, uh, and this gives me an additional four USB 3 ports uh, to connect in. And the bonus of it is the one X slot that it's in is pretty much useless. So um, I thought it'd be a good way to utilize that slot that's above the video card with this and uh, it, it's really useful for me because uh, with a lack of Thunderbolt it, I, at least I get uh, you know additional USB 3 cards. Uh, as <coughs> as I said GX Titan X Maxwell uh, 12 gigabyte uh, VRAM uh, I've also got a Blackmagic Deck Link Intensity Pro 4K in there. So basically I use this to capture uh, it, most of my footage in and out. And then sometimes if I'm feeling good, I'll, I'll throw it out a 10-bit output to an 8-bit monitor um, for Resolve. But that's just basically so I can get a full screen uh, output from Resolve, which isn't possible unless you have a Deck Link card. And then just under that, I'm actually... is. <coughs> So just under the Declan card is uh, SM961256 gigabyte, and that's my Windows 10 Pro drive, uh, which allows me to dual boot into Windows 10. Originally, I was gonna put the 680 in. Well, I did have my uh, GDX 680 in, uh, and then last minute, I thought, you know what? Throw the Titan X. It was here, and uh, the drivers are there, and it's unfortunate that I don't have, that uh, OS X doesn't have um, Pascal drivers, because I would love to put, you know, a Titan X from the Pascal series here, or even the TI that's coming out in the next couple of days. Um, that would be a super duper card to throw in. But um, why I didn't go for the Z uh, the Z270 is it's not exactly supported yet, and um, I would rather use a safer bet from a 6700. K, which is actually in the iMac 5K, uh, and power management and all the rest of it is supported. Okay, so I'm going to give some advice here, but I, I do urge people to jump over to Tony Mac X86 for the full guide. Uh, like I said, this is from the username Storks. Uh, so once you're in the BIOS, jump over to the advanced section, uh, go to the extreme tweaker, jump into the AI overclocker tuner, and change that to x.m.p. 
and then after that you want extreme tweaking enabled uh, and then jump out of the extreme tweak and jump into advanced items you're going to want to set your system agent configuration vt-d to disable then you're going to want to go to pch configuration and change the iao apic 24-119 to disabled usb configuration you're going to use legacy usb support uh, selected to auto and then the usb configuration to xhci handoff enabled uh, then out of that you're going to jump into the apm configuration and you're going to choose power on by pci slash e pci and you're going to disable that so after you've done those you want to jump into the boot menu and you want to disable fast boot uh, then you're going to want to jump into the boot logo display and disable that also um, and then in secure boot you're going to want to uh, pick under os type other os um, and then obviously boot option one you're going to want to pick the usb uh, drive that you've made with multi beast or uni beast uh, exit and save those changes so after you've made those bios settings uh, you should make the usb with uni beast uh, and you should follow tony x's guide on their website uh, but then once osx is installed and you want to create your uh, multi beast setup basically these are the settings that i used and what stock uh, sort of told me his guide says to use so just some quick start you're going to want ufi boot mode on drivers audio you're going to you're going to want to select realtek alc 1150 and also 100 series audio and then on the optional driver side you're going to want your disk set to third party sata uh, under misc you want to want fake M smc plugins and also fake smc hardware monitor application then over to drivers, you're going to want network, Intel, then you want to install the Intel MOSI Ethernet, and again on drivers, USB increase max port limit, and then add, and this adds rehab man's USB inject or kext. And then build, so you can view all the configuration as you can see here, and then just click save, so you can save that file somewhere as a backup, and then install. So if you look at about this Mac, you can see here, it's the iMac identifier. Uh, the processor is identifying correctly, the RAM and the graphics card, the Titan X is coming up perfectly there. Uh, and the update actually works. So when I installed this, it was a 10.12.2 um, and it must have updated since then, maybe during the week to 12.3. Uh, so like I said, everything's working just fine. Uh, just a quick, uh, to show you some of the performance in the XP941 uh, this is basically like I said the same one that's in the trash can it's a 512 uh, and the reported reads and writes are at 1100 write and a 1200 read but uh, OS X doesn't ever get what uh, Windows does in regards to read and writes and as you can see here we are actually getting 955 write and a read of 9 I'd call it 1060 10 yeah 1080 megabytes a second which so that's super fast uh, looking at a quick geekbench um, as you can see everything's coming up perfectly and I won't bore you in this part so we'll just speed it up here by 1500 and there you have it there's the result so super fast uh, single core performance um, you know absolutely blows both my old max out of the water and the multi-core isn't that bad and it's actually not far off my eight core uh mac pro okay so there you have it uh don't ask me too many questions this was my first hackintosh uh, i'll try and help you as much as possible but if you if you're using the same components please i'll put a link down to uh stork's guide uh down below and you can actually just follow his guide to the t um and it and it truly does work um i had literally within half an hour it was up and running and that wouldn't have been possible without his guide so in my next video we're going to take a look at what kind of performance gain if any i did gain from going to this hackintosh uh, unfortunately i did sell the mac pro the, the trash can um so i don't have that anymore to sort of benchmark against but we will look at it against the old cheese grater 12 core and against the 6700 four core uh, so it'll be interesting to see the results and to see what kind of performance difference there is between the two uh, until next time thanks for watching
des esclaves en régiment toute votre vie et qui vous dit ce qu'il faut faire et ce qu'il faut penser. 